Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the Football Manager Career Mode with Chelsea Football Club. Today, let's switch over to the game rather. We have a big game away at Arsenal, so it is a big London derby. There is also a Manchester derby with Manchester United taking on Man City and Previously, as I've been playing through skipping to this week's um, fixtures, you'll see Man United are now below us, and that's because they lost 2-1 to Liverpool. We'll check their schedule here. Boom, look at the run they were on, and Liverpool end that run with a 2-1 win, and now they've got Manchester City. And then their only remaining game is Aston Villa, who are even sixth in the league, so that's not an easy game. So hopefully this is more points dropped for Manchester United in this fixture. Arsenal, of course, a team we want to be beating. We've secured top four, so no matter what, we're in the top four. But ideally, we want to get our third place position. We've had it almost the entire season, so it'd be a shame to drop it right near the end. So if Manchester United lose today and we can get a draw or a win, I think I'll be very, very happy with that. Um, and the other news is that Luton, as you can see down here, they are the first team to be officially relegated. If I bring this table onto the left here, you can see they are relegated. So Luton are gone. They most likely will be joined by Nottingham Forest. I think that will happen in this game week. Um, and then Wolves, Burnley, one of these other teams will also be the teams getting relegated. But you can see top four is already locked in, which is good for us. And we've been on some pretty good form. The only bad news and I hate to have to break this to you guys is that Enzo Fernandez has broken his arm if I pull this down you can see here gonna be up for about four to six weeks with a broken arm I could have had him play with like protective equipment and he could have taken part in light training and matches but I thought you know what it's the end of the season top four is all that really matters we'd really like third position but we've secured top four I've been getting told every week pretty much that we need to give Enzo Fernandez a rest. He's playing too many games. Um, so I think it's fair. You know what? We'll give him the last couple of games off and let him recover from that uh, broken arm. So let's get into this game against Arsenal. Of course, it's away. So at the Emirates, it's never going to be an easy fixture. And how on earth does that happen? Manchester United have beaten Man City 4-1. So... That puts the onus on us. Given the goal difference here, we realistically have to get the win against Arsenal today. Um, and then on the last game day as well, we will also probably need a win because they're playing Aston Villa, who you'd expect them to beat, but it's possible they don't. Tottenham uh, have beaten Everton and Newcastle have beaten Fulham. So it's down to our game. And I think what we're going to do before we even consider you know, what we're doing on the team sheet is do exactly what we did in the previous episode that resulted in so many goals and it's having these guys both as inside forwards somehow this seems to be the tactic that it, it, i thought it would be too attacking you know basically having three strikers going but somehow this works the charm so in the box to box i'm going to be playing Conor Gallagher it's the role that suits him you know down to a T Conor Gallagher in this central midfield he's got so much stamina his tackling is good his passing is good his shooting is good he's got enough pace like he's he fits it very nicely so I think we'll have Nkunku in at the cam and on the left Mudrick's been in pretty good form I believe right yeah in these last couple of games he's got two goals there and an assist in this game so I'll give Mudrick the start Madueke on the right hand side has been outstanding, a 7.42, 5 goals in his last 5 appearances, so Madueke will get the start, as for the bench, let's check here, we've got all the players we need, we've got Caicedo, Paddy Achille, Andre Santos could get on the bench, um, yeah, do I really want to trust a very young player that hasn't even started a game for us? I'm going to bring Jimmy J. Morgan on, actually, because I wanted him to get at least some game time this season because he looks like a very good um, potential striker option for us in the future. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on him. He's only 17 years old. Um, Sterling, you know, even though he has played okay recently, I think these players deserve to start a bit more than him. Um, Cole Palmer, being a bit average recently as well. Um... Trickle maker, no, Hazard, no, right. I think I'm happy with this as it is. Broyer going to be starting for us. He's got three goals and two assists in his last five, so I think that's very fair. <laughs> Lavia in the deep line playmaker role. I think I'm happy with this. Let's get into the game. I'm looking at the Arsenal lineup. They have Havertz up top, Saka, Martinelli, Rice, Odegaard, Timber in the midfield, White playing at right back, and then the defenders, uh, Zinchenko, Saliba, and who is it? Gabriel, I believe. This is our lineup. I think we're looking strong. Please, lads, let's get a dub. 
Arsenal with a corner here as Odegaard whips it in. Saliba does get his head onto it, but thankfully that goes over the bar. Now it's hard to attack here with Rich James trying some sort of throw in, but that was really, really bad. He pretty much just gifted them possession. So Ramsdale now on the ball, going to look to maybe go long, although he's taking his time with it, ref. You know, you got your watch count in this. Uh, they, go, they go long, but Colwell wins the header. We cannot win the second ball, though, and now have it, but Colwell mops that one up nicely for us. And we're going to look to go forward ourselves. Lavia going over the top to Broya. It's a great ball. Ramsdale's off his line. And it's a great finish. Yes, what a ball from Lavia. And the run from Broya and the finish is just mwah, sublime. Arsenal trying to play this one out from the back as they have Ben White moving down this side of the pitch. Broya looking to put some pressure on Saliba here. Can't quite nick the ball off him though. And now Gabriel finding Timber in the defensive mid roll. He finds Zinchenko. He's looking to go forward. Madawaki though picking up the loose ball but then gives it straight back to them very very poor from him there and now Saka on this side Chilwell trying to win that one but he can't Saka's been a bit tricky with his feet here and now Saliba taking them forward but they got nowhere to go it's all the way back to Ramsdale Chilwell trying to press Ben White here he does and he wins the ball back for us as we now charge on the counter attack he needs options here. He's got Mudrick in the box. It's a deflected cross and Broja gets his head on the end of it. And that is 2-0 up. Wow. In the first half, we're 2-0 up against Arsenal. This is big. Arsenal playing out of the back once again here as they find Zinchenko out wide. And now we're going to have to put some pressure on them. We can see today that putting pressure on... Oh, and there it is. Broja winning the ball back. Mudrick trying to drive through. He wins it back again. He shoots and it's a poor shot right at Ramsdale. But as I was saying, pressure on these Arsenal players is what's winning us this game currently. We keep putting pressure on, winning that ball back and just going straight at them. And they seem to not be able to handle it as things stand. As Lavia goes all the way up to Mudrick. Fast plays football here and he shoots and it's into the side net. Okay, and we have made it to half time here. Looking the dominant team, which is very nice. Broy has got a brace and he's on for a hat trick. I'm going to say, I'm pleased. We created loads. The scoreboard reflects it, but we do have a slight problem. And Kunku has had a little knock to his knee, and I don't think it's worth risking, especially near the end of the season. You know, if he gets hit again and then there's some real damage to that knee that could keep him out for a while so I think if we bring on Cole Palmer in that role it's a role that suits him down to a T so I think we'll be fine with that a few performances that aren't amazing you know on like 6.6s but with the score as it is I don't want to mess up uh, what we've currently got going so I'll leave it as it is and get us into the second half we're going to whip this one into the box for us. Looking at the back post, we can't quite get anyone on the end of it. And now it's going to be Bukayo Saka to break. Can we stop him? Ideally, we need to get this ball off him before he finds support. But he's got it in Smith Rowe. Broya still tracking back, trying to get the ball off Smith Rowe. And now Zinchenko finding Rice. Jorginho looks like he's going to hit one. It's Odegaard. And that is a decent little save from Sanchez. I noticed they made a lot of changes at half time. Havertz got hooked. Jorginho's on. Martinelli got hooked, as you can see in the bottom left. A bunch of changes at half time. So they are. Oh, that is an absolute scrambled mess of a goal. I think we made the save and it just bounced straight back to Odegaard. Let's have another look at this. Off the corner, Trossard. It's a header from Gabriel and Sanchez palms it straight at Odegaard. We just taps it in. So now we've got a one goal lead. 10 minutes left in this game and I'm going to make some changes to just try and show the game up. Um, our centre-back's not really performing amazingly, but I don't have a left-sided one to play. Rhys James also having a bit of a stinker. I don't really want to bring him off because even what we've seen from Malagusto is not great in all honesty. And these guys are looking all quite pleased, so I don't want to actually make any changes to the defence. Mudrick's looking nervous on the left, so I think what I'm going to do is put Broya on the left because he's actually brilliant there as an inside forward. And we'll bring on our youth striker up front. And then Matson decides, yeah, I'm going to leave it as it is. Rhys James is going to take a shot here, I assume. No, he oh, he lays it off for Palmer, but he just gets tackled instantly. And now Chilwell finding Rhys James getting caught on the ball, though this is really not a good area and time <laughs> to be losing the ball here. Lavia chests it down, looks to clear Palmer winning the ball back for us through the header there. Now Sterling going to look to take us forward. Oof, they're putting a lot of pressure on our lads at the moment. Fofana putting a ball out to Chilwell. That's great. Finding a lot of room out here. Now he's driving us forward. Broya, who's definitely offside, puts it in for Palmer. He scores. But I'm 98% sure Broya was way offside for that one. We'll see if it gets given. I have no problems with it. It's disallowed. Yeah, I thought so. He looked about a mile off. 
And there we have it, full time, a big 2-1 win. The goal they scored wasn't even a great one anyway, so I'm almost counting that as a 2-0. We'll give them the clean sheet. Um, I'll say, great feeling to beat your rivals, you know, I'm not going to put a dampener on this one. We've just beaten Arsenal at their stadium. So I'm more than happy with that. That puts us back above Manchester United. And now it's going to be down to the final game day, which will be in this episode. This will be coming up next. And we have Luton Town, who are already relegated. So I don't think you could get a much better fixture than this. 20th place, Luton Town, already relegated. Nothing to play for. This is the game that you want. Nottingham Forest are officially now relegated as well. And like I said, Man United are playing Aston Villa, who are currently 7th, but with an extra game to play. So they could be up in 6th by that point. Um, actually, they could even be fifth, right? Yeah, they could be fifth by that time. So this will be a big game um, for them to try and get in Europe and all of that. So and Kunku's injured for one to three days. That's okay. And yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's get forward to that game at home against Luton to end off the season. Well, 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 Tottenham have confirmed that Conte will be the new manager. He has come back to Tottenham after all the turmoil that resulted in him basically slandering the club whilst being employed by the club. Conte is back and, you know, in real life I think that would be an absolute disaster, of course, given how him and Tottenham was just never a match that was meant to happen but in game he is a very good manager of course and in real life he's a very good manager we did get the news that Sterling will be out with a pulled ab muscle so he won't be available for this last fixture but yeah Conte back at Spurs that's something I did not see coming and here it is, the final game day of this season. Aston Villa taking on Man United. Aston Villa had a game against Crystal Palace, but they didn't win. So their chances of getting into Europe are still possible, but not, uh, not looking great really at the moment. But a win against Manchester United would do them all the favours that they need. So let's hope they can do that. Uh, Liverpool facing off against Fulham. City against Palace. Uh, Tottenham against Nottingham Forest, Arsenal against Wolves, no major games here in regards to us. The only one we care about is Aston Villa and uh, Man United. So hopefully we can get our win and we'll be fine. A draw might do it, and a loss might do it, I suppose, if Man United do lose. But we'll keep an eye on their game as our game is going on. But let's get to our team selection. Of course, we have no Enzo and Sterling is also out with a little bit of a, I think it was a pulled ab muscle or something along the lines. Nicholas Jackson also picked up a small injury, so Jimmy J. Morgan has to be on the bench basically for us this game. And Conor Gallagher will get the start in the box-to-box -box role. I think we'll play Cole Palmer there off the left, Mudrick off the right, Madueke. Broya up front. And the rest of the team, you know what, I like it. Lavia's a great little playmaker for us. The back line looking strong. So in terms of the bench, let's just make a couple changes. I guess we'll do something like that. And I think we're good to go. And here we are in the first five minutes, the first highlight of the game. We have Reese James bombing down the wing. He finds Madueke, who's going to look to find someone in the box, but he loses out on the ball here. But Gallagher picks it back up, finds Nkunku, who finds Madueke and chips the keeper. And that's a nice 1-0, nice and early on. I'll take that all day. Reese James going to whip this one into the box. Now he's looking for Broya at the back post. He finds him, but it goes off the crossbar and over. So close. Madueke on the ball here, looking to drive forward. He's going at the defenders, trying to cut inside. He shoots, and it was a decent little shot, but the keeper makes a very comfortable-looking save in the end. And Aston Villa have gone 1-0 up against Manchester United here. That is big, big news for us. Ollie Watkins getting on the score sheet for him, and that is big, big news. So we could get away with, you know, dropping points today, but realistically, we're looking for a win, and we have... Oh, I thought we were going to have a chance there uh, by getting a header into the box off of Mudrick, but we have a throw-in instead, and we're coming up to half-time, so it's going to be close, but if Aston Villa are ahead at half-time, and Magic Wake with another goal, what a little header that was. There we go. I did just see something pop up in the bottom left about that game, so we'll see. Maybe... Aston Villa or Man United have scored again in that game, but we're 2-0 up in our game, so we're looking strong. And then, oh my gosh, Manchester United in three minutes have equalised and then gone on and, well, they're winning the game currently. So it's looking a little iffy in that game, but we're doing our part here with Madueke having a fantastic game. 
Still well with a throw in on this side now as we have Gallagher driving forward. Looking to get to the edge of the box, maybe he's tackled. Lavia finds Chilwell, ball into the box, and Madawake is fouled there. That should be a penalty, and it's surely going to be Madawake on it, right? I'm pretty sure I've got the thing ticked that if you're on for a hat trick, you get to take the penalty. So Madawake will have a chance to get his hat trick here. The penalty is awarded, and yep, it's him. He lines up, he shoots, and he scores. Madawake with a hat trick. What a bit of form this guy is in. You know what, with 62 minutes in, I think it's time to get some players that don't get much game time, a bit of time on the pitch here. Let's get our youth striker, Jimmy J. Morgan, on the pitch. I think we should get, give Hazard a bit of a send-off, get him on for Mudrick, uh, Caicedo, Santos, maybe. Let's get Ian Matson on, and Malo Gusto as well. <laughs> give these guys some rest that need it anyway. Um, and yeah, I'm happy with how this is going. We are looking very, very strong, and look to be set to, to take up third position in the Premier League table here as Gallagher hits it from range and it's just off the crossbar. Ian Matson on the ball now looking to take us forward if he wants to, you know he's taking his time here. He finds Lavia who's going to look to go forward himself, he finds Malo Gusto in a lot of room on this side. He's driving forward. Can he find Madawake? Yes, he can. Jimmy J. Morgan's in the middle. If he can find him, he turns back. Looking for Hazard. He shoots and he scores. Eden Hazard getting on the score sheet in what's probably his last game for Chelsea. That is what dreams are made of. Malo Gusto on the ball now, trying to get us another goal as Nkunku receives the ball. He finds Gallagher. He shoots and it's just over the bar. We are on fire today, ladies and gentlemen. Madawake driving down this wing again. The guy is having a fantastic game as he finds Nkunku ball into the box. Jimmy J. Morgan, our youth striker, gets on the score sheet. I think that's his first ever goal for Chelsea and it's at home at Stamford Bridge. That is a moment he will remember for the rest of his life, I'm sure. Lovely stuff. We are absolutely dominating this game. And like we said, you know, it's a, it's not much in it for Luton. So we're always at an advantage here. They're the worst team in the league. They're already relegated. But we have come in today and we have performed so, so well. And it looks like we're looking for a sixth goal today as Madawake is on the ball again doing his magic. Today has been probably his best game ever in a Chelsea shirt as he finds Ian Matson now on this side of the pitch. Looking to go forward, we find Eden Hazard dancing around. He finds Jimmy J. Morgan again and it's a good save from the keeper. And Kunku driving towards goal here. He's looking for Jimmy J. Morgan again and he finds him. Jimmy J. Morgan's on a brace and I mean maybe he's going to get a hat-trick if we can get another goal. This could be a hat-trick on his debut. I've thrown us on as attacking as we can go. I don't care if we lose the clean sheet, but it'd be nice to see our youth, um, our youth striker get his hat trick on a, on his debut, which would be absolutely crazy. But it looks like it could be a Luton Town goal as they shoot. And oh my God, who did that ping off? It was Ian Matson. It was going wide, I'm pretty sure. And uh, yeah, Ian Matson has headed that one into his own net. And there's a minute left in this game in what looks like this will be the final highlight as we have Levi Colwell on the ball. Probably going to find Ian Matson here. Yeah, he does. And Kunku now looking to go forward. He puts a ball up for Jimmy J. Morgan, but he can't get his head on the end of that one. Madawake on the ball here as he puts the ball into the box. And there it is. We've got the goal we wanted. Jimmy J. Morgan has got a hat trick on his debut. An assist by Madawake. We'll have another look at this one on the replay. He keeps it in well here. Malo Gusto with a great ball through for Madawake, even though it's you know a bit of a deflection. And it gets all the way through, and he <laughs> unbelievably has scored a hat-trick on his debut. He scored, he's had his debut, his first goal for Chelsea, and a hat-trick for Chelsea. That is insane. Him and Madawake have performed outstanding. It was worth conceding that goal to get the, um, the hat-trick in the end. That's as comprehensive as it gets, you know, a 7-1 win in the final game of the season. If that doesn't give us some confidence going into the next season, I don't know what will. And this will be the final Premier League table if you want to take a look at it. Man United just about scraping a win against Aston Villa in the end. Brentford beating Brighton, Liverpool beating Fulham, Manchester City beating Palace, Newcastle beating Burnley. And yeah, all the other results are about what you'd expect. And we have secured third position and... Decently comfortably in the end, you know, a 7-1 win in that last game has done a great job for us. Even on goal difference, we would have been fine had we drawn. Um, and then Arsenal coming in 5th position and Newcastle in 6th. Tottenham all the way down in ninth, And the rest of the table looks semi what you'd expect. I mean, Brighton are in 13th, which doesn't reflect uh, real life at all, really. But Luton, Nottingham Forest and Burnley are going back down to the championship. So... 
next season will be without them. It'll be interesting to see who's coming up. I'm not sure if the championship will have concluded yet. Let's take a look. Championship, let's see if we can see. Wait, that, uh, it's, good. it's going to be called something stupid, isn't it? Um, oh, it's Skybet Championship in the final. So there's still the playoffs to be played. But as it stands, Leeds are definitely coming back up at Leicester. And it'll be between QPR and Stoke for the other team. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the sort of records that we'll have for this year. The most goals was Manchester City on 99. We weren't actually that far behind, um, but we know who scored most of those goals. Um, ending interesting here, most possession we were in fourth place for. Um, pass completion we weren't even anywhere near, so it probably shows that we tried to be a bit ambitious with our passing maybe, and not quite as safe and short passing. Um, most clean sheets goes to Liverpool. We were again nowhere near on this one, and the fewest conceded. We were decently close to the, the pack, but Liverpool well ahead there. So, and I do think a lot of that is down to the goalkeeper Robert Sanchez. Really not good enough for us um, this season. So that's why we've got Diogo Costa in already, and of course we'll be making some more transfers in this off season. I'll keep you guys up to date with that in the next episode. Um, and then looking at some of the player stats, of course, we have Erling Haaland leading the way on 60 goals, which is just crazy, averaging a goal every half of a game, which is just nuts. But our boy, Armando Broya, if we take Erling Haaland out of the conversation, because of course he's going to win it, we have Armando Broya on 23 goals, which was a brilliant performance from him at only 21 years old. He did really, really well. Um, but obviously can't compete with Erling Haaland. Most assists, unfortunately, with Sterling getting you know injured and sort of falling out of form the last few games, he has fallen away there. But he was decently high up there, and Reese James as a fullback on 12 assists as well, matching what Andrew Robertson did for Liverpool. Let's say that obviously most shots will obviously have been Erling Haaland. Player of the matches, Haaland, Fernandez, odds on Edward for Crystal Palace. That's a bit of a surprise there. Key passes, we don't have anyone in this one. Best pass completion, not really all that bothered. That's always going to be defenders and such. Tackles one, we don't have anyone on that list. Weirdly, Mohamed Salah up there. So I guess, you know, pressing from the front for a Liverpool is working well. And then, of course, most clean sheets, nowhere near for um, Robert Sanchez. And we were even below a few, you know, teams we should definitely be beating. We had Alisson, Edison, Brighton's keeper, Bart, and Mark Fleck and and Andrea Onana all ahead of Robert Sanchez. So next season, we need to be right up there with Alisson and Edison if we want to, you know, be a top, top team. Crosses completed, you can see down here, we have Reese James, interceptions, all this sort of stuff. So if you guys want to take a look at some of these, feel free to pause and have a read through them. Armando Brea was offside the most. I can believe that. There was a few offside goals that I remember this season. And yeah, overall, very happy with that. A good season overall for us. Um, surprise, surprise, Reese James has won the Goal of the Season award. So we'll congratulate him. He doesn't actually like us very much at the moment. Um, so we, we'll ignore that. But we've, of course, got the top three here. So we'll take a look at them and see if Reese James did deserve the best one. Bowen with a free kick. That is a very nice free kick in all fairness. Not sure I'd say that it deserves, you know, a third in Goal of the Season. But that was very nice. So let's go ahead and skip that one. This next one is between Newcastle and Liverpool. So a good fight for the, you know, sort of top four Champions League spaces here. Is it going to be a Newcastle goal? Maybe, surprisingly. Shah here from distance if he hits that. Okay, fair enough. That was a pretty good goal from distance to just turn and hit that one. And then let's take a look here. Rhys James's goal is probably going to be a free kick, I think. And it is. It's this one from distance that he hits and curves onto the opposite side to what you'd expect. And a free kick from there being scored is good, but I think I'd say the keeper probably should have done a bit better there. We even have some news here from some of our lone players. Trevor Chalaba helped Lazio qualify for the Champions League. He made 24 appearances. That's good from him. Harvey Vale uh, got Bristol Rovers promotion from the League One, so they'll be playing in the Championship. And the same for Mason Burstow. He was at the same club. Let's see how they did. Wow. Harvey Vale had 50 appearances, 11 goals, 8 assists, and a good average rating there. Made some bursts now, 19 appearances, but 7 goals. That's a good, good um, sort of ratio there for him. So not bad. We do have a bunch more players that have been out on loan um, that will have decisions to make on whether we're keeping them or whether they, you know, we end up selling them. These are all the players rated from top to bottom on their average performances. You know, we've got Ziyech. There's an option to buy on his contract for only about 2 million. So we'll see if Galatasaray take him up on that. Kalamutz Nadoi, probably one we're going to sell. Same for Kukurea. 
Datra for Fana maybe even, so there's players here that I definitely want to be selling. And if we can bump this budget of about 70 million up to 150 million, you know, something crazy like that, we'll have opportunity to improve this squad massively. And here we are, we have our end of season review. So this is what we'll end on today, looking at the new arrivals as it is. Transfers in from Southampton for 3 million, Jimmy J. Morgan. Um, I mean, he only had three appearances off the bench and he managed three goals, which of course all came in that last game. Sterling having a good game. Of course, my camera's a little bit in the way here, so maybe I should move this out of the way for you guys just so that you can see everything here. If I move it down here and we'll get rid of the socials there, you can see everything a little bit better. Um, Sterling doing well, of course for us he had a great season, 11 goals, 15 assists, but he is one that I'm considering selling, if we can get some crazy money for him, he's worth about 100 million, uh, Enzo Fernandez, of course having a great season for us, a 7.16 average rating, and managed 8 goals, 3 assists, uh, 10 goals, 3 and 7 assists for Mudrick, that was a good outcome in the end, Noni Matawake towards the end of the season was outstanding, so him on 12 goals, 9 assists. These, um, you know, signings of this season, some of them obviously didn't happen this season, but the way that the database is sort of loaded, this is how it's worked. So there you go, you can take a look through everyone there. Hazard managed 2 starts and 2 goals with 9 appearances off the bench for us. Of course, coming in as a free transfer. The transfers that we sold, um, these are players that have performed, of course, some of these are out in the Saudi leagues, so they're going to perform pretty well. Thiago Silva's one that we sold and he still managed to perform very well even at his age but I just think in the Premier League he wouldn't quite have made it. Christian Pulisic 9 goals 6 assists out in Milan. Lukaku only managed 7 goals and 1 assist out at PSG but we did sell him for 50 million so I'm more than happy to have taken that cash. Um, 17 goals and 3 assists for Havertz at Arsenal that's a pretty good return for him. Timo Werner out at RB Leipzig, 16 goals, 1 assist. So keeping an eye on some of our, you know, older players here that have been gone for a while. But there you go. If you want to pause at any point, you can take a look. As Piliqueta, of course, El Capitan, managed 3 assists out at Atletico Madrid. And then this is our loan development. So these are the players that have done best on loan. Trevor Chalaber, Harvey Vale, Ziyech, Kalmudson Adoy did decent, although he only made 9 appearances out at Roma. Kuko Rea did okay out at Juventus. I'd be appreciative if they could take him on a permanent, but I don't know if they'll really do that realistically. And yeah, some other decent signings there. Uh, some other decent performances, rather, there. Our expectation was to qualify for the Champions League, so we went from 12th last season to 3rd in this one, so I'll take that all day. The top goal scorer was Armando Breuer, and then this is our form here as we take a look. Some, some patches of a bit of dodgy form, but overall pretty decent. Getting knocked out here by West Ham was an absolute killer. We should have gone on to do well there. And the Carabao Cup one, that hurts the most because we demolished a bunch of the big teams and then lost to an absolute minnow. But we go to the moments to remember, of course, that 7-1 win in the last game will do it. A 6-1 win over Arsenal, that was also a big one. And then that free kick that we saw from Reese James was the goal of the season. The finances... Looking strong, as always, for Chelsea. Our top shirt sellers were Sterling, Enzo, James, and Kunku and Mudrick. That's not surprising. They all had fairly good seasons themselves. This is how we lined up. And as you can see, the only real non-performers in areas of this was Axel de Sassi, was maybe a little below average. Robert Sanchez, maybe not great. But overall, pretty solid here. I'm very happy with them. With the overall performance here, and you know, like Levi Colwell players like him, Reese James, these guys are young, they're only going to get better as time goes on. So, this will be a very exciting second season. We won the manager of the month once, which I guess we'll take. Fans player of the season was Reese James, as well as young player of the season. They love getting Eden Hazard back, I'm sure. I would have loved that if that happened in real life, even if he's well, well past it with his injuries and such. Most goals in a season, these are the records broken, most assists, clean sheets. Player of the match awards and the worst discipline goes to Moise Caicedo, who really has been a bit of a disappointment for me in this save. History in the making, just a couple quotes on us there. And then this is our manager timeline. So far looking pretty good, but we don't have any trophies yet. That's one thing that we want to be looking at next season. So I'm going to go ahead and sort our stuff out, ready for the next season. If you guys want it, be sure to leave a like on it. Let me know in the comments if you want season two. Otherwise, maybe we end it on this one and we just say, you know what, it was a good one season. Maybe we wait till the next football manager or something to pick this up again. 
Let me know what you guys think. Hit subscribe if you want to see my future videos and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.